This is Math 151, and we are going to talk about um, exponential and logarithmic derivatives. So what if we take the derivative of an exponential function or a logarithmic function? I'm going to start with the definition. e, the natural base, e to the power of x, is its own derivative. This is a very unique function in that sense. This is the function that its output is how steep it is at that point. So, for example, if I, if I graph that, we know logarithmic functions have this, this curving up. So when x is 0, the slope of this line is 1, is that output. 1x plus 1. You can see there's that the slope is 1, and it crosses through uh, that line right there. And when x is 1, notice it's uh, the, the y, the output, I'll get is 2.718. That, that's an approximation for e, for the value of e. So when x is 1, remember the y value is the slope, so the slope would be e. So I could say this would be, um, that's how steep it is, and then I would have to move it around to get it there, and I can do that pretty easily. When x is 1, the derivative is the same as the y value, which is e. This curve right here, this y equals e to the x, it's its own derivative in the sense that if you derive, if you take the derivative of it, you get e to the x, or if you plug in an x value for it, 2, boop, it can tell you right there that that is the slope at that point. There's our f of x. We want to find the derivative of it. And notice what we have here is a chain rule situation. We have e to something. So the, der the derivative of e to whatever, remember think of this as e, e to the u, right? We're going to have to take the derivative of that, which would be e to the thing, and then we have to take the derivative of that. All right, well uh, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so that would be, this will then be multiplied by secant squared, and I have to go in deeper again with this chain rule because now I've taken the derivative of tangent, and now I have a 2x. So if I take the derivative of 2x, that's a 2. I could write this like this. I could leave it like that. I might clean it up and write like 2 secant squared. But this is the derivative of that. Notice that I had e to some power. I Then the, the derivative of the e part gave me this, and then I had to chain rule this out. Take the derivative of tangent, gives me this. Take the derivative of 2x, gives me that. Here's another function. Let's find its derivative. And this looks like a quotient rule to me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write it out instead of just do it. It's remember a quotient rule is derivative of the numerator, and that's e to the x squared, times the denominator, minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. So now I have to find these derivatives. And notice in here I'm going to have a, a chain rule again, right? So like the derivative of e to something is, is e, to, e to the same thing. And now that I've done the derivative part for the e, I have to do it for the x squared. And that'll be multiplied by this. Derivative of x squared, right, it would be then that is 2x. So I'm just going to write that up front like that. And that is still multiplied by this x. So this right here is this derivative times x minus, this one's a little easier, e to the x squared. So one times, I don't need it, over x squared. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I You know, I can multiply this x by that x. So I could think of this as uh, 2x squared e to the x squared minus e to the x squared over x squared. And you could leave it like that. If you really wanted to uh, factor out an e to the x squared, you could. You know, like s whoever did the key for your book might have done something like that. But that would give us something like this. Um, again, I'm happy with this answer right here. Um, you should be able to see that these are equivalent, though. You know, especially if you're checking answers in your, in your text. All right, here's another one. Let's take the derivative of x times e to the 2x. All right, this is a product rule. So if I, if I were to write out the product rule, it would be derivative of the first 
times the second plus um, the first times derivative of the second. And you can see here I'm going to have to do a chain rule for this part. So the derivative of x is just 1 uh, with in relation to x. So that's 1 times this, which is this. Uh, I still have x multiplied by derivative of e to something is e to the something. And now I have to take the derivative of the something part. Derivative of 2x is 2, so that's multiplied by 2. I'll just put it out front here. And so it's a e to the 2x plus 2. I don't need the times in there. e to the 2x. This is good. You can see you might want, you could factor out an e to the 2x if you want. You don't have to. I'm going to give you another definition. We know the derivative for e to the x, that it's itself. So let's also get the derivative for the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. These are things to know. These are derivatives to know how to do. Uh, boy, why would this be? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just show that we can get this from this. So if I have something that's y equals natural log of x, then I'm going to want to take the derivative of, of y relative to x. First off, I know that natural log and e are inverses of each other, right? Natural log is log base e. So I could rewrite this as e to the y equals x. Now I'll take the derivative of both sides with relation to x. This side's easy, it's a 1. This side, the derivative of e to something is e to that something. And then chain rule, I'm going to have to take the derivative of y again, with, but it's, re, it's with respect to x. So this would be change in y with respect to x. Notice uh, that's the thing I'm trying to find, right? That's the derivative of, of y with relation to x. So this is e to the y times, so I'm, going to, I'm just going to divide both sides by e to the y. So that's kind of okay. I've isolated that uh, d of y to d to the x, and so... This isn't in terms of x, though. Oh, but notice this. e to the y is x. Just plug it in. So this is 1 over x. So if y equals natural log of x, the derivative of y in relation to x is 1 over x. Alrighty, let's do some derivatives. So f of x is this. That's natural log. So if I want to find that derivative of f, let's see, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So a natural log of whatever, the first piece is 1 over whatever. And then, that's chain rule, that's going to get multiplied by, I have to take the derivative of what's in here. So derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, derivative of 3x is 3, and that's a 0. And notice that this is times this, so if that's over 1, Essentially, this is up here, and there's my derivative for f. So let's take a look at, uh, at g then. Okay, what I'm about to do right now, you, you probably don't want to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is show like a pathway that is going to be a dead end. It's not going to be a dead end. It's going to be a really tough road. I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to back out of, just so you know what I'm doing right now. So if I go to do this, uh, natural log derivative is 1 over, so 1 over this would be like that flipped, times, and then I have to chain rule this thing out. So look at this. This is some big monster quotient rule in here, right? It would, it would be derivative of the first times the denominator plus, uh, no, minus, because it's quotient, derivative of the denominator times the numerator over the denominator squared. Now you can power this out, right? Like you'll have to do a product rule here, uh, multiply everything out, and maybe, maybe hope stuff cancels out. You could go this route, but there's one thing that I know about natural log uh, logarithms is that we can expand expressions that are as logarithms. So you remember that like, Multiplication can become addition. Exponation can become multiplication. So I could rewrite this, and this is something you did back in, I think 141 maybe. Could have been 142. This is pre-calculus skill. So this is the same as natural log of x squared plus natural log of sine x minus, because this has come from the denominator, 
um, natural log of 2x plus 1. And I could even do one better. I could take this exponent out. Now that's still g. That's not the derivative. That's just me expanding this natural log statement. But hopefully you see, now if I go to take the derivative, this derivative is easy. This is like 2 times natural log. So derivative of natural log of, of something is 1 over something. So 2 over x plus natural log of sine x. So it's um, 1 over sine x. And then chain rule. So I have to go the derivative of sine x is cosine. Minus uh, natural log of this is, is 1 over this. But again, I have to chain rule it. Derivative of that that's in there is 2. And that's like, I think I wrote less than I even just like in the first step of the of what I called kind of the dead end or the rocky road approach. Um, and I can clean this up. I mean, this is a good answer too. Cosine over sine is cotangent. So I could write this as... Now sometimes you got to power it out. Sometimes it just doesn't, it, it's not advantageous to rewrite it. But... Uh, often it is. So let's do this one. Find this derivative. And I could go, you know, one over this and then take the derivative of that, kind of power rule it out. I'm going to, again, take advantage of natural log. I can bring that exponent out. Now, a, a mistake I'll see people do is they'll try and split this up. You, you can't split that up in natural log. The, the natural log relationship is the things are multiplied inside natural log or any log and that shifts down to separate log statements that are added together. Like addition has nowhere to go. So this is as far as we can go on this. But it makes it pretty good because then I have a natural, so 5, and then the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something, just pushes it to the denominator. And then I chain rule that out. Derivative of this is 3. So this would be 15 over 3x plus 2. So I have these uh, differentiation relationships for e to some power and for natural log of x. I'm going to generalize this now. So if I have if I'm finding the derivative of just some number to the x power, notice x is in the exponent here. It's a lot similar. I have, but then what I do is I multiply by natural log of b. This is a constant, like this is a number. Um, so, for example, if this was 3 to the x, the derivative of that would be itself times the natural log of that base of 3. It's a nice connection here, like you kind of e to the x is itself, b to the x is, is not itself, but it's off by natural log of b. Think about that relation back to e. Uh, similarly, if I'm going the derivative of some log statement, so I'll just call it uh, log base b. Again, similar, 1 over x, right, similar to the natural log, but then in the bottom I have uh, natural log of b. Of that base. So this was like, if this was like log base 6 of x, my derivative would be uh, 1 over x and then natural log of 6. And my 6 looks a lot like a b, doesn't it? So really, let's, uh, I just want to show that these work, just, just so they don't feel like big magic. I have this y equals uh, b to the x. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. This is a move that you will see later in this lecture. Uh, this is a very, very clever move. And so I'm doing that because I actually know how to find the derivative of the natural log. Um, notice again, I have this relationship. So I can bring this, this x out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the derivative of both sides. So the natural log, uh, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever I'm natural logging. And then I'm trying I'm taking the derivative relative to x and this is a y. So that leaves me my dy dx and that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to solve for that. Equals um let's see. I rewrote that funny. I meant to be have it like that. Because then I could bring that exponent out, make it easier. 
the derivative of x times natural log of b natural log of b is just a number it's a constant the natural log of x is one so it's natural log so now i'm going to multiply both sides by y but i don't want it in terms of y i want it in terms of x but i know what y is in terms of x y is b to the x so if i shove that b to the x in here i've got this formula right here I want to show this relationship as well. And so y equals log base b of x. I'm, I'm going to find dy of dx. I'm going to find the derivative of this. And I'm going to uh, do a nice move. Log base b and b to the power are um, inverses of each other. So I could rewrite this as b to the y is x, like definition of logarithm. I'm going to do the same stuff that I did before. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Again, I'm going to take advantage of natural log. I'm going to rewrite this as y times natural log of b, natural log of x. Now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. This will get moved up here. The right-hand side, derivative of natural log over x, I know that's 1 over x. I was given that up here. I was shown it. And then this side, let's see, this is y times natural log of b. So if I take the derivative of that, this is natural log of b is just a number. So this is that number times the derivative of this, so dy dx. So now what I can do is I can divide both sides by that number, by that natural log of, of b. And I have my relationship right there. So if you didn't want to memorize them, um, I guess you could build them up, you know, over and over and over again each time. Or you could maybe use them enough that you're familiar with enough with them that, that you know them. All right, I want to find uh, the derivative of this. So I could go derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. So a derivative of three to the x, that's this relationship right here, it's itself times natural log of that base of three, and that is multiplied by the derivative of this, that's just a constant, so it shouldn't bother me at all, right? That's the derivative of this part's gonna be zero. Derivative of three to the x, I just did that. It's itself natural log of the base, and that's multiplied by 3 to the x. So I'm going to take this and distribute it into there. So 3 to the x times 3 to the x is 3 to the 2x plus 2 times 3 to the x natural log 3. Notice that's not 6 to the x, right? This is 2 to the 1. This is 3 to the x. I can't, um, I can't combine those. And then uh, 3 to the x times 3 to the x is 3 to the 2x. That's all over this. And this gets subtracted out by that, leaving me this. Let's find the derivative of this one. So the derivative of y um, log base 2 of this. So log base something of that. So this is 1 over the something, the input, times natural log of the base. So that was us taking the derivative of the log base 2 part. And now, um, since we have to chain rule this, we have to take the, the um, derivative of this, 3x plus 1, which is just 3. And there it is. All right, I gave myself a little bit of room for this one. And these, um, these are crazy, man. Like you graph them on Desmos and just look at the shapes of these. Um, y equals 2x to the fourth plus 1 to the power of the tangent of x. So let's get clever with this one. Like I could take the derivative and I would have to be like, well, I don't even know how I deal with the power of uh, tangent of x. So I'm mean, going to have to get clever with it. This is logarithmic differentiation. 
and I did it earlier in, what, in the proofs. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides first. And the reason why is that lets me deal with this exponent, right? Natural log of b to the c is c times natural log of b. So I can bring this tangent out front through that natural log relationship. And now I'm going to take the derivative of, of each side. So this left-hand side, the, the derivative of natural log is 1 over whatever. And then chain rule this. Then I have to take the derivative of what's in here. Uh, the derivative of, of y with respect to x is dy over dx. All right, so here I have a product rule. These two things are multiplied together. So I'm going to go derivative of tangent. That's secant squared. And that's just multiplied by the second term. Plus, well, I'm going to have the first term and then the derivative of the second term. So now I'm taking the derivative of this natural log term. So derivative of natural log is, is 1 over. So the, the 2x to the fourth plus 1 is going to be in the denominator. And then I've taken the derivative of natural log. Then I have to take the derivative of what's in here, which would be 8x cubed. Now, and it feels really good. I've done a lot of work. I feel good about my derivatives. But I'm not done because I'm not solved for dy dx. I have this as 1 over y. So really I need to multiply both sides by y here. And I'm not going to leave it in terms of y. I know what y is. Y is this. Uh, I'm just going to move the y to the front. Uh, 2x to the fourth plus 1 to the power of tangent x. Didn't get the whole thing there. Times all this. Hoo-wee. Look at that derivative. All right, uh, two more here to do. Uh, so y equals blah, all this. Um, if I go to try and take the derivative right away, I've got this crazy quotient rule with uh, product rule embedded in it with chain rule embedded in it, man, um, I'm going to take advantage of natural log. So I'm going to natural log both sides. So I can expand this into natural log of x plus, because it's coming from the numerator, natural log. I'm going to write this as 2x plus 1 to the 1 half, minus, because it's coming from the denominator, natural log of e to the x, minus, this is coming from the denominator, natural log of sine cubed x. And I am also now going to deal with these exponents. I'm going to, I'm going to bring them out. So natural log of y equals natural log of x plus 1 half times the natural log 2x plus 1 minus x times the natural log of e minus 3 times the natural log of sine x. All right, I'm going to move this need more room than I thought I would need. So now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. Right, I'm going, to, I'm going to take the derivative of this side. So the derivative of natural log of y, natural log is 1 over my thing, and then I have to chain rule it, d, um, d of y relative to dx equals one piece at a time, natural log of x, 1 over x. 1 half, so plus 1 half, natural log of 2x plus 1. So I've got this 1 half already. Natural log of this pushes this to the denominator, and then I have to chain rule it, so then I take the derivative of what was inside natural log, derivative of 2x is 2. Minus, natural log of e is, is 1. This is just a 1. So this is like x times 1, so this is just an x. Derivative of x is 1 minus 3, and then the derivative of sine is cosine. And man, all that work feels so good, feels like you're done, but look back, and this is not solved for uh, your derivative yet. You kind of multiply everything by y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y, and I know what y is. It's my original question. It's like what I was asked at first. It's interesting to have on these how like the problem itself 
creeps back into the derivative. So my derivative would be y multiplied by all that work that I did. Oh, and these twos cancel out. And there it is. So y equals x to the x. Again, I, I want to find that derivative. I'm going to take advantage of natural log. I'm going to natural log both sides. That allows me to bring this exponent out. So now I'll differentiate. Derivative of natural log is 1 over whatever. And then I have chain rule, so y with relation to x. This is a product rule, x times natural log. So um, it is going to be derivative of the first, which is 1, times natural log. Uh, derivative of the first, right, which is 1, times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. The second is 1 over, uh, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over x. So this is x over x, which is a 1. Again, I'm not solved for this yet, so I'll multiply both sides by y. I know what y is. It's right there. So this derivative would be x to the x times natural log of x plus 1. Hey, you know how we have this power rule that we've been using? You know, like x to the fifth, its derivative 5x uh, to the fourth, right? Bring, bring that power down and then um, reduce it by 1. And we extended it into negative numbers. So we've been using it with, uh, with integers. I want to I wanna prove that this thing works. And I'm going to, well, kind of do our theme, natural log both sides. That allows me to bring that exponent out. Now I'm going to take the derivative of each side. Derivative of natural log is 1 over the thing. And then i got to chain rule this, so that. Um, this is uh, just a number times natural log of x. So the derivative of this would be the number, and the derivative of natural log over x is 1 over x. That. Uh, multiply both sides by y. But I know what y is. So move that up to here. y is x to the r, and that is uh, multiplied by r over x. So let me think about that for a sec. That's be the same as like x times r, uh, x to the r times r over x, be the same as r x. This x is like, this is like the x to the first power, and a first power is like uh, in the denominator, is the same as a negative power. <laughs> ah, there it is. And these two multiplied together, you add those exponents. And there it is. There's our there's our there's our uh, power rule. And notice I didn't put any restrictions on R other than it's a number. Like it's not a function, it's not a variable, it's a number. So that means I could say uh, let's say it's 3.9. Well, the derivative then would be 3.9x, and then reduce this by 1. So now, here, if I do this proof, R's, R, does, R can be any number. So it could be square root of 2. The derivative of this would be square root of 2x to the power of square root of 2 minus 1. All right, powerful, powerful. One last example. Y equals tangent x to the pi. I'm going to do it two different ways. And actually, since this is kind of fresh, on our uh, fresh on the tongue, we've just tasted of it. I'm going to do a power rule for that. So if I'm going to find the derivative of this, I can bring it down. Pi, pi is just a number, and that gives me tangent x to the power of pi minus one. So I did the derivative of something to the power of pi, and then I have to chain rule it. So then I have to take the derivative of the thing that was in there, which is tangent. Tangent is secant squared. And that gets me right quick to that derivative. Now, before I have this connection, I'm going to go through that natural log. And you're still going to have to go through that natural log in, in a lot of these. It's not like it takes care of it all. But since this is just the number up here, easy. Bring it on out. Derivative of both sides. 
this is pi times this, so it would be pi. This would be over tangent of x, right? Natural log of that. And then chain rule, give me a secant, a secant squared x. Not solved yet, I gotta multiply both sides by y. And y is tan x pi, right? So if I multiply by y, I'm gonna have y times pi times secant squared x over tangent x. But I know that y is uh, tangent x to the pi. And notice, this is tangent x to the pi. This is tangent x uh, to the first power. So this would be like a negative one. There's my tangent x pi minus one right there. These two terms right here. All right, get that practice in. Uh, send me questions, message me. Take your time with this. Get it down.